Don in London, hello, it's July 17th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, or addiction to both substance and behaviour. And I know my substance addiction was alcohol and would remain so if I were ever to take it up again. And at the moment I'm enjoying a daily rep reprieve which has been going on for some time. So daily reprieve, one day programme, a life plan for a day, no coping strategies other than to know that coping is something we do when we're not actually in the moment of now, that we're going through some ordeal. So when coping strategies are mentioned often these days, it's about overcoming something rather than living something, experiencing something and making a choice in the moment to experience it rather than push it down and out of the way. So my coping strategy for many years was to use alcohol to take away the edge, that harshness or as they say take the edge off and um, I'm glad I don't anymore I have to face up to what is the reality of now and what helps me with addiction is uh, not just fellowship the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous it includes family professional people community and being a part of something to be included rather than excluded to be out there with people rather than isolated and not to be self-obsessed or self-absorbed to the point where I cannot cope at all or live at all. So it's all about reality for me, living one day at a time. And uh, here I share how recovery is going for me and the measures I try to deploy rather than some which are not so helpful. The ones I, I enjoy using, utilizing most to say, am I making progress or what? Is how am I emotionally, how am I spiritually and how am I physically? on a daily basis so that's good it means that I'm aware of where I am just for one day just this one and uh, the fellowship of AA is integral to my continued sobriety I feel I cannot speak for Alcoholics Anonymous it's full of unique authentic people and there's a tradition which is um, number 11 which is about sharing our experience strength and hope mainly in the rooms of AA and not outside it so for me, I've long been uh, in a situation where I was never anonymous actually because at my first meeting I, f I saw friends I knew and they hadn't told me where they were. I saw neighbours I knew and I didn't know they were part of the AA fellowship and my mum's best friend was in the front row. So anonymity was sort of never, never so for me and I wasn't stigmatised as one can be by admitting that I had a problem and no solution to it. So my problem, addiction to alcohol, the solution to find a place where fellowship works, professional people can help me and family can identify this person is coming along and able to be part of life again. So it takes time and there's no fixing uh, an addiction unless you go back to the substance you were using or the behaviour you were using. And it's a short term coping strategy. It's normally called oblivion and uh, these days I don't want to obliterate myself or find oblivion so that I don't feel what's going on I don't understand what is going on and I shut down and hide so it's about being out in the open for me included part of and accepting where I am today so that's my little preamble and there's a preamble or statement shared at the beginning of every AA meeting and I emphasize again Unique authentic people can speak for themselves if they choose to and in which arena they prefer to. So anonymity is the spiritual foundation of the fellowship. I feel that anonymity provides the opportunity of sanctuary to find our spiritual truth. So it may seem like a, a fine distinction but it's a, a fundamental one for me. Truth is spiritual for me just the absolute truth of now and I'll never know it all obviously I can only make progress but if I'm out there included and part of I'm more, I, more able to find out who I am on a daily basis and for me anonymity doesn't help me that greatly but it did in the first instance just to understand that there are a great deal of people trying to live one day at a time in recovery so this is the preamble and it says this AA Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. 
AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization, or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose, and this is it, our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that's on a daily basis. 24 hours, that's all it is. That's the time, if you like, we have as an opportunity to keep sober. And then we do it another day and another day. And with any luck, we get joined up days, which then lead to longer term understandings about how we are emotionally, spiritually, and physically. So we improve with age, hopefully, in the fellowship. But uh, for many years, I guess, emotionally, I was suppressing my feelings. I only wanted to show the joy of life rather than experience the sad of it. And the difficulty is when we've pushed our feelings down for so long and covered them over with an ocean of substance, for me, alcohol, others, drugs, or behavior, workaholic, relationshipaholic, you name it, we can cross addict into trying to make ourselves look good or fix ourselves with something. And we all have these possibilities and potentials. So nobody is ruled out. And you know what? We're just human, just human beings trying to find a way forward. So the gift for me is fellowship. Uh, I lean on it hard when I feel outside, well, awkward, not myself, and it's all to the good. And the Daily Reflections book, which I share here, this one, Daily Reflections, gives us one page a day about AA and the 12 steps, 12 steps of action to change attitude and behaviour. And for me, changing attitude is a, a daily program, changing behaviour is a daily program, and knowing what is good, the good of good conscience or to a higher power of your choosing. So it says here, July 17th, surrender and self-examination. My stability came out of trying to give, not out of demanding that I receive. Thus I think it can work, work out with emotional sobriety. If we examine every disturbance we have, great or small, we will find at the root of it some unhealthy dependency and its consequent unhealthy demand. Let us, with God's help or good conscience, continually surrender these hobbling demands. Then we can get then we can be set free to live and love. We may then be able to 12-step ourselves and others into emotional sobriety. And the 12th step is all about sharing the message with, with others and much more. It's putting all of the 12-step program into action on a daily basis because it all impacts on, in one day. And if it didn't, then the steps would not, would not be there as a, a useful toolbox. So there's nothing in there which you can't utilize on a daily basis on a daily basis. And it goes on to say, years of dependency on alcohol as a chemical mood changer deprived me of the capability to interact emotionally with my fellows. I thought I had to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, self-motivated in a world of unreliable people. Finally, I lost my self-respect and was left with dependency, lacking any ability to trust myself or to believe in anything. Surrender and self-examination while sharing with newcomers helped me to ask humbly for help. And this humbly, or humility, which is the uh, opposite of pride, really, is not, is not actually a weakness, it's an actual strength, to be able to say, I don't know. And, I, and for me, it's, I don't want to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, and self-motivated self -motivated in a world of unreliable people. I need to be in with all the unreliable people, and myself as well, to make progress and understand from mistakes I can move forward. And I've run out of time again. And you know what, uh, the serenity prayer, which is all about acceptance, to uh, exhort to God or good conscience, or just to good conscience or an understanding of your fellow man. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. So, with me, serenity is experiencing the good and the sad or the joy and the sadness as it is the serenity is acceptance of life on life's terms it's not about being happy forever it's about experiencing life as it is just for today